I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we're all about big design in small spaces from Queens to Brooklyn, Chelsea to Murray Hill, where we join journalist and legendary scribe of New York's nightlife, Michael Musto. And speaking of nightlife, see how this designer remade his apartment to evoke a night out on the town. Friend of the show, Drew McGookin, shows off another vibrant project just off the High Line. And you're going to want to stick around for lunch. Alfresco lunch, that is, with chefs Eric and Maddie. But before all that, we explore the live-work home of these charming partners in design and life. We focus on the design of fun and sophisticated environments. And our home is the lab where we get to test all of these fun ideas. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. This week, we explore some imaginative and colorful takes on the one-bedroom apartment. And we are getting started on a tree-lined street in Chelsea with the architects and partners behind Bond Studio. Noam and Daniel designed their sophisticated apartment slash atelier with modernist pieces, personal flair, and of course, a New York attitude. Take a look. Hi, I'm Noam. I'm Daniel. We are partners in practice and in life and the founders of the New York-based Studio Bond. And welcome to our home here in Chelsea. We designed this place in mind with living and working and very much like an atelier. Instead of telling you about it, why don't we show you around? Let's go! You enter the apartment through a private elevator and you immediately come in into this living room which has really these high ceilings, a wow moment for everybody that walks in. Lots of light coming through these huge windows and through our windows we see beautiful townhouses that have been here for 150 years. The fireplace is the focal point of the living room. It's made of arabescato marble that's very luxurious and gives the entire space a kind of majestic feeling. Even when we design spaces that are quite minimal, it's really important to have a punch. And for us, this is the fireplace. The square shape of this space is pretty challenging. When we designed it, we really thought about it as a bit of a loft, creating different corners within the space rather than trying to take it over with one big gesture. This sitting area is really my favorite place in the house. I love that you can move the furniture around, the tables on wheels, the sofa breaks up into different modules, and it's nice when we have kind of a bigger group of friends here. I also just love sitting next to a library and having basically these books that a lot of them are architecture books, books that we work with all the time. For the dining area, we chose a beautiful glass table designed by Le Corbusier in the 1920s. It has this beautiful glass top which reflects the outdoors, but it's also wonderful for sketching. For the dining chairs, we chose a mixture of Scandinavian chairs that are very beautiful and have this beautiful patina. And to complement the simplicity of the Scandinavian chairs, we chose the bunny chair. It's very beautiful, very whimsical, but uncomfortable. But everybody still wants to sit on it, well, at least for five minutes. I love listening to Daniel playing. It's so relaxing. For me, what's relaxing is cooking. I spend a lot of time in this kitchen. I really feel the kitchen is the heart of the home, and so we wanted this to be as open as possible. Should we show them the bedroom? Sure, let's go. Welcome to our bedroom. In contrast to the living room, the ceilings here are much lower. It's a little bit darker, and creates a more of an intimate feel. And it faces the trees in the back. And when you look out, it really makes you feel as if you're in a tree house. There are a lot of interesting details here. For example, the headboard is made out of 1950s fabric and paired together with these really fun lamps that we got from a hardware store. It's $4 each and that just shows you that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get great impact. We like to introduce sexy little surprises in every bedroom that we make. And the window to the shower does just that. At Bond, we focus on the design of fun and sophisticated environments, and our home is the lab where we get to test all of these fun ideas. Thank you for coming on this tour, and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Coming up in just a bit, lunch al fresco style in Brooklyn. 
Bring your appetite. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're in the Clinton Hill section of Brooklyn with chefs Eric Huang and Maddie Sperling. Let's join them for a closer look. Hi, I'm Eric. Welcome to our Clinton Hill apartment. I'm the chef at Pecking House, and this is my fiance, Maddie. I am also a chef. I was obsessively looking for apartments online, and then when I finally came across this listing, I actually came to see it by myself because Eric was so busy with the chicken project. But I FaceTimed him from the apartment, and he gave me the go-ahead to start paperwork right away. I had never seen it until we showed up, but I love it. Yeah, it's that's true. The yeah. first time you saw it was the day we moved in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you walk in the front door, and the first thing that you'll notice is that you're in our bedroom. But it has some really nice details. I love the bay windows. I also really love nice wood details all around. But we needed the space to be more than bedrooms. It's also a home office, a home gym, exercise bike, great exercise bike. And my cello is there. I have renegotiated my relationship with the instrument, and I've started playing again. When you walk into our living room, I mean, first of all, you're taken aback by the high ceilings, but there are also some other details that are still intact from when it was built almost 100 years ago. There's these beautiful pocket doors. There is a really beautiful wooden decorative fireplace. And then this kitchen, which is, I think, very cute, and I really enjoy it. But our favorite piece of furniture is that thing. Her name is Chubby Cat. She's a very nice pillow. And she also functions as an alarm clock. Her most important function, actually, is yeah. the alarm clock, actually, yeah. One of the best things about this space is that there's outdoor space. There's a beautiful little terrace out there. It's a really nice place to have a morning coffee. The one caveat is you have to climb through the window. I am a New Yorker. I was born and raised here. I went to college in Chicago, and then when I came back, I decided I wanted to be a chef. So I've been working in New York City fine dining for the last 10 to 11 years. I really wanted to open my own fine dining restaurant. That was always the goal I had been marching towards for over a decade. And obviously, the pandemic had different plans for us. So I was cooking at my uncle's restaurant, Queens. And the restaurant's called Caking House. It's been in my family since the 70s. We we figured, you know, what, what can we do to try to kind of keep this place running, you know, keep the lights on, pay the rent. So we kind of looked around the kitchen and really the only thing we could make reliably was fried chicken. Here we are now, but we are deep in Queens and Fresh Meadows. So how do we get it, people? We got to deliver it. And we still do it. And now we have kind of a fleet of drivers. The operation has grown quite a bit and we deliver about 550 to 600 fried chicken dinners every week. So what are you going to make for lunch, Chef? I'm going to make a homestyle rendition of Pecking House fried chicken. We'll do herbs fried rice with hamon and egg, and we will do a charred iceberg stir fry. This is a country style fried chicken that I have grew up with eating southern style KFC Popeyes kind of chicken. It was a recipe I was very familiar with, and it just kind of came together in my mind one day, and I didn't test it a lot, and it happened to work out. <laughs> spice, spice, a little garlic powder, mustard. Buttermilk. This is a jamon, a Spanish ham. And then I'll fry the rice. And I'm just gonna let it, I'm gonna brush it on the other side, let it drain for a second, and then do rice, and that's, that's pretty much everything. It looks great. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so we're <laughs> I love the cooked iceberg. Yep. Mm -hmm. You show me you show me a new way to eat lettuce. I've never had it this fresh before. Yeah. Only uh, only late yeah, night only after like, riding around yeah. in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like hours later. Mm -hmm. So this is Pecking House Fried Chicken at home. Thank you for having lunch with us in Clinton Hill. Hope you guys enjoyed spending some time with us in our humble apartment. Well, you should all definitely check out Pecking House in Queens, which now offers in-person dining on top of their delivery service. 
Coming up in just a bit, we join designer Alvin Wayne to see how he personalized his new apartment in Long Island City. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone. Now we join designer Alvin Wayne at his apartment in Long Island City. Alvin wanted to personalize his space, allowing his own eclectic taste to shine, all while giving every area the exuberant, celebratory feeling of a night out on the town. Take a look. Hi, I'm Alvin Wayne, an interior designer, and welcome to my very own apartment here in Long Island City, Queens. So this is an 800 square foot, one bedroom apartment in a new building, but I brought in so many personal touches to make it my own and I cannot wait to show you around. So when you enter my home, you're greeted with this neon sign. It says, kiss me Carl. And yes, it's Carl Lagerfeld. This was a window display for his makeup line and my friend was actually gonna trash it and I was like, no, I need it. It's the perfect wow factor and you always wanna start everything off with a bang or a kiss. And right off the entryway is the dining room lounge. I wanted it to feel fun, dramatic, and unexpected. Like any great night out on the town. It all started with this banquet. Isn't it lovely? It's made of olive green velvet with a walnut base. I designed this round table specifically for this space. It's made from teak and features these sculptural legs that give it whimsy and visual interest in the most unexpected way. I further defined the space with this removable wallpaper in a tropical theme. And on the opposite wall, I placed an oversized antique mirror. It makes the space feel larger and reflects the light in the city beautifully. This is a place that really makes you feel like you're in the VIP room, minus the bottle charge. I'm serious about design, but trust me, I want you to have fun while you're here. And that begins with the look, right? And the key to the design of this living room was to keep the furniture low to maximize the view. And what a view it is. This sofa is so comfortable. It's leather and it has lines that are reminiscent of mid-century modern design. I love these chairs because they're sculptural and they're in a boucle fabric, which is very comfortable. I love to bring luxurious materials into any room that I design. And this brass and marble table does just that. Underneath, there's a cowhide rug, and it complements these materials beautifully. So conventional wisdom says, in a small space you go lighter, but I say paint it black, and that's exactly what I did here behind the bed. It somehow makes this small bedroom feel endless. I love to mix pattern, and I did that in the carpet, the bedding, and even the headboard has a pattern. As in most New York apartments, rooms need to have dual purpose. And this also serves as my office. For the desk, I use a console table, and that's a great tip. Console tables tend to be thinner and take up less space, but they provide the perfect amount of surface area to get your work done. I have my mood board there and my samples, and I work to the sound of the city. Well, that's my home here in Queens. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you can see how with a few choice furnishings, accessories, wallpaper, and lighting, you can make any space feel like you, and that's the most important thing. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, we are just over the high line with designer Drew Magookin. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Now we're in West Chelsea with designer and friend of the show, Drew Magookin. He skillfully incorporated his clients' belongings with furnishings of his own design. Take a look. Hi, Drew Magookin here to share with you a well-edited one-bedroom apartment at New York City's newest icon, The Lantern House, by famed architect Thomas Heatherwick. Let me show you around. What I find really unique or quite special about this home is this large, expansive living space. While it may not be a huge apartment, the living space reads and lives like a much larger home. We've got seating over by the window. We've got dining space. We have living, cozy TV watching in the living room. All of this functionality living in one great space. 
While comfort was key for this client, he also wanted to make sure we were packed with wow factor. It's no secret that a true Drew Mugukun interior will resonate from place of pattern and color. This sofa in particular was a real leap of faith for the client. It's a sofa that I designed. It has an interesting edge detail on the sides and you see the lamps coming up. And then by adding a bold graphic pattern that resonates from black and white, so the push between light and dark really grounds the living space. From the sofa pattern, we moved into layers of texture and color and pattern within the other upholstery pieces in the space that all tie back to the colors in the client's existing art collection. And speaking of artwork, I even figured out how to make a seven foot giraffe work in the space. This chair is another piece that I designed, lovingly referred to as the McSwivel. What makes this guy a crowd pleaser is the ability to contrast the fabrics. So not only do we get texture and color in the seat and the body, but the facet detail and the arm surround gives us an opportunity to bring in yet another color. It's all a matter of creating balance and harmony. Thomas Heatherwick's renegade architectural style was the jumping off point for the design of this home. The exterior has been referred to as barrels, hand grenades, but the correct terminology for these windows is actually lantern. And the first decision we made was to install lanterns within the lantern. I saw the architectural lantern as an opportunity to create a seating nook opposite the dining room. In doing so, we selected these sculptural horsehair chairs from the client's existing collection. Rumor has it they were an original set of four and Angelina Jolie now has the other two. The charcoal gray that we painted the doors throughout the apartment became one of the big themes in this space. You'll notice it in the custom king bed fabric. You'll notice it in the slatted lampshades. We also chose a natural textural fabric for the walls to push back, create dimension and coziness. I worked with an artist to create this mirrored panel with a circular center that echoes the shapes of the pieces a client had collected over the bed. Now I'm a huge fan of an upholstered bed. We designed this one for the client and my favorite part is this wonderful gray nubby fabric which adds pattern and texture back to the space in a very subtle way. A rhythm also reflected in the city views. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was able to marry a client's existing collection of art and furniture to dynamic architecture, weaving in custom pieces of my own to create an overall beautiful home. Isn't that the point? See you next time. Just after the break, we are with journalist Michael Musto in his Murray Hill apartment. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're with a New York legend in Murray Hill. Michael Musto is an author, a journalist, and an all-around bon vivant who gave a generation a glimpse into the nightlife of the city in its 80s and 90s heyday with his column. Now he gives us a glimpse into his own witty, eclectic, and amusing home. Take a look. I'm Michael Musto, the longtime writer, commentator, and TV personality, and I'm here in my one-bedroom co-op in Murray Hill. My personal style has always been controlled and organized, and yet flamboyant and colorful. I've procured items that include good taste, high taste, no taste, and kitsch. I mix it all together, it's kind of a hodgepodge, but it's all very me. After you enter the apartment, you're in the living room, which is designed for comfort. I have a beautiful leather couch, two-tone black and white. Those eyelashes I found in the street. In New York, people leave the best art pieces just out for grabs. This is sort of the Hall of Fame of kitsch. These are all my favorite dolls. It's things that I bought for my mother or friends bought for the family. Adorable, adorable, adorable. A little weird, but it's very me. And I have a plate I made with my mother on it. I'm a mother's boy. I'm like Norman Bates, basically but nicer. This is my bedroom. It has a wall unit which consists of archival things. Also, more dolls, religious items from my mother. One of the few designer things I actually own is the bedspread, which is by Miss Sony. But don't be afraid, I got it through 
a Missoni H&M collaboration. It was super cheap. And of course the M&M pillow adds just the right touch to say I'm not that serious. What apartment is complete without an Audrey Hepburn as Holly Golightly doll? Uh, Golden Girls, one of my favorite shows of all time. I have all kinds of merchandise. I fan myself with the Golden Girls. This is a portrait of me by Olin Montgomery and what he did was he took a Polaroid and then painted over it. That's why it looks so much like me, but he did a great job of interpreting it. This is by a guy named Zito and it's a portrait of me on a tabletop, which is so perfect, I can eat on myself. I think my design choices are quirky and unique, but obviously they work for me. I've put my imprint on every square inch of this place. In fact, I do that with everything I do. Thanks so much for coming to visit. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?